When it comes to accomplishments, there's a lot of things that come into play with it. What task are you trying to do that actually will signify that you are successful? What have you done in your life that actually signifies you as a person? That actually makes you look like you've made it in life to fulfill the American dream? By ha getting a college degree, paying off a house for the first time, or paying off any debts that you've had without any needs of going through bankruptcy. Having a successful marriage or being with the person that you love to get married to and having children with that person. Most of those things right there are considered an accomplishment. If you are dark side Phil, you want to look at getting married not as an accomplishment, but just as a prop to pay off taxes. But he wants to go on to say that he gets a certain rank in a video game and all of a sudden it's like the equivalent to him of winning the Nobel Peace Prize. And the category for that award, though, would be for who the fuck cares. Last night was really cool, and here's why. After me grinding, essentially, with Yoshimitsu in Tekken 8 for, what, some three weeks? I hit purple ranks with him. Now, for those who don't know, just like with Street Fighter VI, there's separate ranks for in ranked matches for Tekken. Um, you start down, I want to say you start at, like, gray, and then it goes to, like... Light blue, green, yellow, orange, red, and then purple, okay? And there's still more above that. There's blue, like dark blue, and then gold, which is like the top level. And then if you're like one of the best in the world, you get one of those super premier exclusive titles that you can't get unless you're like number one or something like that, right? Thank you for pay explaining how a progression system works in a fighting game, Phil, especially for online ranked play. Thank you so much for that while disgustingly trying to explain this. What I hit last night with Yoshimitsu would be the equivalent of, say, getting like low to mid-level diamond in Street Fighter VI, okay? Not, not master rank yet. Master rank, I would argue would probably be around like mid-level blue to gold, okay? I don't really think so. I think in getting the purple rank, that's like hitting high platinum, almost to low diamond, but that could be very debatable depending on who you ask about that. But I'm like one tier below that. And that's pretty good because again, as I keep explaining to you guys, which a lot of people don't seem to understand, I don't really have a competitive background nor a lot of competitive knowledge when it comes to Tekken. I don't have a competitive mindset when it comes to Tekken. Oh, by the way, let me pull up this trophy that I won when I did a, tur a mall tournament playing Tekken 3. Let me pull that up out of nowhere. Phil, it does not matter about you having some mindset about Tekken. The problem is that when you play any game online, you have that automatic competitive mindset because you want to be better than everyone else. But as soon as you get your ass kicked, you're going to blame the opponent for why you lost, even though you could have learned from the opponents, but you still want to cope seed mauled about how you're better than them when in reality, you're not. I've played the series over the years. I know basics like Paul Phoenix. You saw on day one, I jumped in with Paul and I got a big win streak, right? But outside of that, uh, I don't have that level of experience. And so for me to have jumped into a different fighting game franchise other than Street Fighter, and within a month of the game coming out, essentially getting to pretty good rankings with a character is pretty big of an accomplishment for me. Phil, stop saying that you getting a certain rank in a video game is a high accomplishment. A high accomplishment in actual life would be having a child and watching them grow and succeed into becoming a person that you want them to be. Another one would be graduating from college with either a bachelor's or a master's degree or a doctorate. Another one would be getting married or owning a house for the first time. Those are considered massive accomplishments. But the problem with this whole entire thing, Phil, is that you're looking at something that's fictional, that nobody cares about in life. And you're wanting to say that this is a major accomplishment. But here's the thing with this accomplishment, though, Phil. Nobody gives a shit. A lot of people have even said um, that this game is harder than Street Fighter. I agree with that, actually. Who said this, Phil? Was it someone named a lot of people? And a lot of people are also saying that even YouTubers who play Tekken are having an issue getting out of red into purple. A lot of them kind of hang around high red, low purple, and they juggle back and forth, but they have a hard time hitting it. 
Um, Phil, you really need to stop listening to a lot of people because a lot of people doesn't give you any research or any sources to back the claims up in the first place or just the voices in your head because you're going by what you're believing to be the case when in reality, most people that just play the game, they're playing it to have fun. Sure, the whole thing about them getting higher in the ranks, that could be a fun little thing for them. Challenging and frustrating as they may be, but the problem is though, Phil, is that you're believing that all these people are saying things about it when in reality, you can search this up yourself, but you just choose not to. So it's an accomplishment for me. All right, again, someone who I, 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 I felt like at one point, any attempt to get good at fighting games was in my past. I hear the landscapers outside. Yeah, thank you for getting distracted about the landscapers. But the whole thing when it comes to getting good, Phil, it's the mentality of you actually wanting to challenge yourself and wanting to get better at the game. Problem is, though, you don't want to get better at the game. Instead, you're going to exploit certain combos and certain moves that can get you the easy wins. But whenever you get actual competitive players or competent players that know what they're doing and they whoop your ass you just don't like it you just want the easy wins all throughout life and i think that's the problem with phil is that he's hoping that him sitting there playing a video game he has the easy win in life when in reality he doesn't just due to the fact he has to hold up that beggar's cup i'm gonna have to close the window in a second but yeah like i really felt that way first of all i'm in my 40s you know what I mean? Like, I played competitive Street Fighter at a high level in my early to mid-20s. And then I basically tapped out. You know what I mean? Like, I said, forget this. Did I play Street Fighter after that? Yeah, for YouTube, dicking around. Playing, you know, Madness series. Picking each random character. And uh, essentially just messing around, doing sets, swearing at the TV, swearing at the people on the other end of the internet for fun. Yeah, for fun. Even though you're already like irritated about the landscapers, but I'm going to keep this point a little bit going with this. You said that you did this for fun, when in reality you took what you're doing on YouTube back in the past and you're rubbing it in everyone's faces of the FGC saying, yeah, you can't be where I'm at. I'm on YouTube. I'm a YouTube celebrity when it comes to video games. But yet all of a sudden as the years go on, most people in the FGC that actually have a YouTube presence, they're more popular and well known than you are. Oh, okay, bye, Phil. Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> opening the blinds. That did nothing. I can still hear them, Phil. That did nothing. Okay. The point I'm making here is, for the last 15 years, I haven't actually tried to be good at Street Fighter. No, because you believe that you have the basic fundamentals and that makes you automatically good. One of the things that everyone has always made fun of me for is a comment that I made like over a decade ago. And I think it was something to the effect of, I can be good at games competitively if I try. Like any game I could pick up and play at a competitive level if I actually dedicated myself to it. Now a lot of people made fun of me for that and said, ha, yeah, like Phil's going to play League of Legends competitively. Phil's going to play Call of Duty competitively or whatever. Phil, the whole entire comment of that, the reason why people made fun of you for it is because you said that you could pick up any game. You didn't say fighting games. You said you could pick up any controller and master any game if you wanted to. But you kept saying over and over back in your past that you were one of the best gamers in North America of all time. The delusion set in, even in the past. But it's funny, because over the years, if you watch my gameplay, right? Take a look at Call of Duty. There's actually been years where I play it quite a bit, and I'm actually good at it. When I play it, I'm dominating. I'm always at the top of the leaderboards. I'm the one with the crazy kill streaks and everything, right? And people are Yeah, Phil, stop right there. The only reason why you get the massive kill streaks and that you are at the top of the leaderboard is because matchmaking with the later call of duties but the other thing with that is that you're going up against people that don't know what they're doing but yet you also tend to camp quite a lot and you believe that that's a good tactic when in reality it's not it just makes you one of those players that really sucks at the game like where does this come from because all i've ever heard is that phil sucks at video games so how is he good at call of duty like this you tell me. You do suck at video games, Phil. You took Sephiroth, who was already overpowered in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and you managed to get him killed. 
how you did this. I have no idea. It can't be from your great gaming skills. No, it couldn't be me. And in Street Fighter, I mean, literally any Street Fighter that I've played, except for 5, because I hated 5. Legit, I just straight up hated Street Fighter 5 and didn't want to play it. Yeah, you did play it, Phil. If we go straight into DSP Gaming, we can see the Madness series that you were doing with characters in Street Fighter 5. I thought it played like trash. But any of these games, you know, that I've tried playing and I mess around with, I usually get decent at. But then I just don't care. Right? Like, admittedly, take a look at the fighting games I've covered in the last, like, 10 plus years. The Mortal Kombat Trilogy, so that would be 9, 10, and 11. Uh, Injustice 1 and 2. Uh, I'm trying to think, like, what Capcom games I even would have played, because not Street Fighter 5, because I tried Street Fighter 5 and I hated it. You know, Tekken 7, which is really a joke compared to how I'm, I'm covering Tekken 8. Any fighting game that you play, it doesn't matter what game that it is. The problem is that you always have that competitive mindset that you're better than everyone else, but as soon as you get humbled, you don't like being humbled, and you want to say that the opponent is at fault, the internet connection is at fault, the developer is at fault. You keep going on and on and on with the constant excuses to the point where it should be no fills instead of no Johns. What I do is I cover them in a way where I play a bunch of characters, I go through the story modes, I'll maybe switch around, try some, uh, some good stuff, uh, in, with each character, and then I just drop them within like a few weeks. I'm like, all right, whatever, it's run its course. I never really try to learn the competitive nature of the games at all. Well, no shit. If you're just gonna play it, then drop it within a few weeks. You're gonna go on to say that it's the game's fault, or it's just that your audience doesn't care for it. You'll come up with more excuses to why you drop them. I don't bother with it. I feel like it's not worth the time. Now, here's the thing. Um, I feel like now. Since Street Fighter 6, since I actually put in the time and effort for months and months to get back into competitive fighting games, I feel like I'm back in a position where I could get good at fighting games again if I so chose. If you so chose, but the problem is though, Phil, is that you want to go on saying that you're going to try out all these characters, but then all of a sudden decide to drop that, saying that, no, I don't want to focus on these other characters or see how they play. No, I'm just going to stick to my set few. While everyone else has their mains, they, that's stupid, but I can have my mains and be cool with it. It's the whole thing about hypocrisy here. But people ask me, well, what are you doing it for? Are you actually going to uh, go to a tournament? No. No, I'm not. No, because if you went into a tournament, you immediately, you would be laughed at for being dark side Phil. What? what, what? But yeah, there's a difference between playing a fighting game casually... Play, playing a fighting game at a good level and playing a fighting game professionally. Those are three completely different experiences. You know, casually, you just don't give a shit. You're just fucking around. If you can land a good combo or get a few wins in a win streak, haha, -ha, but it doesn't matter. So playing for fun, essentially. Trying to get good at a fighting game, it's a different level. You feel a level of accomplishment when you overcome a big adversary or you go on a good win streak or you hit a good ranked level like I just did last night. Yeah, you can also have that same experience when going to a tournament, hoping to get a good placement there. Just have fun with it. Again, all of this is focused around fun but absolutely not am i gonna go at a pro level or anything like that i don't care about it enough if i did do you have any idea the amount of investment it takes take a look at the pro players out there who are doing the best they're signed to teams a lot of them have sponsors paying their way to travel to do this they are constantly playing the game some of them a minimum of five hours a day yeah, because they actually want to take the time and the effort to actually learn the game and learn the characters they want to play. Also, the whole thing with sponsorships, though, you want to know the reason why they got those sponsorships? It's because they have a likable personality. They have an enjoyable presence to be around. Something that you clearly do not have. They're going to every tournament, every online competition. That's how you play these games at a high level, right? Not by just dicking around casually online a couple hours a week. You're not going to do that, right? Well, some of them can actually do that and have fun with it. But also, these people that are pro levels, they will actually have videos and tutorials to how to play these characters. Again, something that you don't want to do. Even though you proclaim that you could be a teacher. Problem is, though, I can't see you as a teacher, though, Phil. Because you want to keep going on and on about how you're the best. That you're better than everyone else. Even the pro fighting game players. But as soon as you come across one... Yeah, you get humble relatively quick. Unless it's Snake Eyes, then all of a sudden, get the knee pads on because it's dick sucking time for you. I'm just not into that. My life is very different. I enjoy being a variety style content creator here on YouTube. Uh, I want nothing 
to do with the professional grind. I know what it's like. I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know what it's like that I've been there because I go through all the money matches and I lose all the money matches. Yeah, I know what it's like to be a part of the professional fighting game level. I should know. Jaha almost kicked my ass. I've actually been there in that lifestyle. Back in the 2000s, I was traveling around for competitive Street Fighter and everything, and dude, I do not envy that lifestyle. It is very draining. It is very stressful. Yeah, because it puts you in debt, Phil, with the amount of credit cards that you pulled out. It is time-consuming, and it is definitely... If you ever heard the, the term grind, that's like your life is a grind. Your whole life is just a grind to hopefully finally make it. Get enough wins that you're notable, that people talk about you, that people want to see you play. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he has to take a sip of his grind juice because he can't stop talking about the grind. So, he wants to go on about the grind, but yet he kept repeating the whole thing about grind, grind, grind. Life is a grind, Phil, but not for the sake of fighting games or just video games in general. It's trying to find that one thing in life that can actually get you somewhere, that you can actually say, hey, I finally made it, fulfilling my American dream as of, as of sorts. But some people have the ADD, the American Dream Denial, and they can't have that, but they have to struggle. But with the grind, though, you have to struggle to get where you are in life, and it has to be successful. Everyone goes through that, Phil. So that you clearly don't do, but you want to say that I struggled, I struggled. Holds up the cup. No, I have no intention of being competitive in that regard. But to actually be able to play fighting games at the level I'm playing them is pretty cool. Like, I feel good about this. Playing Tekken and... All right, we're starting with Yoshimitsu, and when I start a fight, I feel comfortable at the beginning of the fight. I know kind of three three different strategies I can start on fight and see what, what happens with them, right? Yeah, three different strategies that you could use. The three different spams that he can pull out. And then situation, I'm starting to learn situational stuff in the game. I'm starting to learn actual character matchups and the like. You know what I mean? Like I'm. No, you're not. You're not learning any of these things with the matchups at all because every single time you go up against a competent player, you get your ass kicked and you keep saying that they're spamming while you're making fun of Jade in the process. Learning this stuff and as I'm learning it, I'm just getting better and better and I'm having a good time with it. I am, okay? Um, And I'm happy that I've done as good as I am. Now, it's hilarious because as soon as I hit purple rank last night, in came the negative comments from idiots. You only do this mashing bullshit and you do this and that's how you win. It's like, ha, ha, ha. I, I, that, you want to know the truth? That makes me feel good. That makes you feel good for being called out for being a button masher, which you are. We hear you mashing the buttons trying to pull out the spam combos, Phil. And every single time you don't pull it out, you're trying to like, I was trying to do this. And it comes out flawlessly because you're not under pressure of getting your ass kicked. Also, I think you need to zip up your pants there, Phil, because I think your king of hate is showing. Because if these idiots are so upset that I hit that rank, that means that it actually is notable that I hit the rank. Correct. Who was upset that Phil got purple rank? Like, who was really upset with this? Because this just sounds like a massive amount of copium mixed with a lot of delusions at this point. He wants to believe that people are upset? Like, really, Phil? How much gin did you have to drink before coming on to say this bullshit? Because they wouldn't, if it was didn't really matter, then no one would care or say a word. But the fact that the moment I hit purple, people ran in to leave comments of how nasty, you know, how stupid I am, how I suck, that's fucking hilarious. Because it means that they're pissy about it. They can't take, they cannot take the fact that last year I told you all I'm going to commit myself to Street Fighter and I'm going to get good at it. And then I got multiple characters into Master Rank. They're so pissy about that, that that happened. And by the way, a, a positive win-loss record on every one of those characters. I wasn't one of the people who grinded for seven months to get one character to Master and had like a 20% win-loss ratio. Every one of those characters had a positive win-loss ratio in Master, right? Phil, you could keep continuing this point about how you got certain characters to Master and that you're taking a massive amounts of pride with it, but... I can immediately just point to Justin Wong, who mastered all of the characters in Street Fighter 6, including fucking random, something that you can't even do at all. And the same thing now with Tekken, I have won way more than I have lost, because actually it was even the great has been keeping uh, stats. Huh, is that your new game tracker for you, Phil? And if you take a look at my statistics, 
with uh, Yoshimitsu particularly, I think I only had, out of all the nights I've played, two nights were losing nights, meaning I lost more than I won. But every other night, I have won way more than I've lost. Like last night, and we're talking high-level red, and then these purple matches that I was having, I won 66% of the time. Uh-huh. Can you pull up these statistics? Or you're not going to, because if you do so, people will automatically look into it and just point out that all these statistics that are given to you are just to inflate your ego, even though you already do a good enough job inflating your ego yourself while looking like a dumbass in the process. That's a great ratio. If you're winning two-thirds of the time in anything in life, you're winning. That's great. So... <laughs> <laughs> two-thirds in life. Oh, if you won two-thirds in life, you're winning in life. Oh, what the fuck, Phil? Yeah, this is no longer a joke. Do you really take fighting games seriously? That That's a part of your life. You gotta be much, really big of a loser to think this mentality. That's all this is. Just a big amount of copium just coming straight from Phil. I think the only reason why he brought up that two-thirds in life you're winning was just because throughout the entirety of his life, he only got participant awards. But if there was a trophy that said, hey, you won two-thirds of your life, he would take that in an instant and think he won first place. I'm actually pleased with how things are going. It's not, oh, Phil is lucky and stumbled into these ranks. I'm actually getting good at the games and getting positive win-loss ratios and doing well, and that's excellent. Yeah, the way that you're just looking around, looking bug-eyed, yeah, that's a massive fucking lie. <laughs> the one thing that does disappoint me, all right? This is, I'm gonna be honest, this disappoints me. It doesn't seem like the viewership is along for the ride. What do I mean by that? I am not getting the amount of any attention or engagement like I did with Street Fighter VI with Tekken. I'm not saying that I'm not grateful. Last night, the support was outstanding. Yeah, I'm not saying that I'm not grateful for people giving me money. No, I'm not saying that at all. I just wish that people would watch me play Tekken. Even though, again, the whole entire thing with people watching your stuff, if they don't want to see you play Tekken or just don't like Tekken in general, then they'll tune out and watch you play something else. But I just love the whole entire thing that you're relating this to a viewership now. If it's not money, it's views. If it's not views, it's money. It's a weird cycle with Phil. The stream was well supported. But when I was playing Street Fighter VI, dude, people were there all the time. The viewership was high. The views on YouTube were high for the videos. Yeah, they were high on the videos. But then when you kept playing it more and more and more and more, trying to milk it for all it was worth, then people tuned out of it because they didn't want to see you play it anymore. Or are you going to say that there's a troll element when it comes to people watching your videos and your streams? That's why I was able to play Street Fighter VI for seven plus months as a featured stream, right? And it was very boring along the way. The only times that you ever got a major attention or just a viewership from it is when you were getting incredibly fucking salty. Do you not understand all of this, Phil? Or, no, you just want to say that I had a good viewership, but all throughout those entirety of the streams, when you kept playing them, you weren't making the amount of money that you thought you were going to make from them. Right now with Tekken 8, I'm only playing it twice a week as a late night stream, so like two, two and a half hours each night, and that's about the most I can do. It doesn't even really work as a daytime stream, you know? People just don't seem as engaged for that reason. Um, Again, Phil, if you have a passion for video games like you proclaim that you do then you wouldn't worry about any of this. You just play the games for the fun of it. But no, it has to be all based around money with you. The amount of support that you get. So yeah, like for me, it is it is disappointing. I, mean, I wonder why. You know, I wonder why uh, people like Street Fighter Six so much better. Do you want... Because people now are asking me questions like, which game do you think is better? Who's really asking you these questions, Phil? Is it the voice in your head that's constantly poking at you, trying to come up with an answer? Or is it just the dents are like, it time Street Fighter? Yeah, it's a really tough question. I think both of them have outstanding graphics. Both of them have great controls. Both of them have really great, you know, systems in place. They're, I, if, if Street Fighter 5, if you said Street Fighter 5 versus Tekken, I would have said Tekken. But now, I think both games are complex enough with their, their engines and stuff going on. Even though you're saying all this shit, praising Tekken 8 and Street Fighter 6, we're still getting the same amount of excuses that we've seen you like pull out of your ass. Saying that the opponent sucks, that they don't know what they're doing, that they're spamming, the connection is bad, rollback netcode, the developer's at fault, and yada yada yada. We still get the same excuses from both of those games, Phil. And have enough going on in them that they're just really good. I, it's hard for me to actually pick. 
Really, it's hard for me to actually pick. I think they're both really good. They're only both really good because they gave you some money out of it. That's the only reason why you're going to say that they're good. Yeah, it's a hard choice for me because I like both a lot. But the viewers definitely have chose Street Fighter VI. Like when it comes to me playing fighting games, Street Fighter VI is the game that more people came out for, more people were excited for. And even now, I'm getting good attack and I hit purple rank. People are like, so when are you going back to Street Fighter VI? Are you going to play with Ed? No! Maybe you got like one or two people asking if you're gonna play Ed, but the only reason why you don't want to play as Ed is because it's Street Fighter V. You don't want anything related to a Street Fighter V character, even though you played as Rashid. I've been saying it for two or three weeks, no! I'm not doing that. I, I have no desire to drop Tekken and I'll go back to Street Fighter VI just because a DLC character came out. No. The only reason why that you won't drop Tekken 8 for a little bit to play Street Fighter VI is because Tekken 8 is the quote-unquote hot new release at the time, at the moment. And as soon as you drop that to play a DLC, then all of a sudden, you're not going to get that support. And you're going to come back on your podcast or the Daily Wrap and just go, Well, I played this and uh, nobody supported. I don't understand why no one wants to give me money. Maybe down the line, but Tekken 8 is very exciting to me right now. And I want to keep going. I want to, I, I want, I mean, what's my next goal? I want to hit blue. I want to get to blue with Yoshimitsu because that's kind of where people consider master rank, you know? Uh -huh. Did you do any research when it comes to finding out the equivalency to Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8? Or are you just going by what a lot of people said again? Because that's what it comes across at this point. But you want to say that you're excited for this? I'm looking at Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. You were excited for that game, but as soon as you didn't get a lot of support? Nope, you went back to playing Baldur's Gate 3. So, I definitely want to keep going. And I hope that people, again, will be along for the ride. I was very happy and pleased last night when people actually were very supportive of me hitting purple. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, they were very supportive of you, giving you tips. I was like, wow, that's really nice of people to, to actually support like that. Um, we hadn't seen that level of support for Tekken in a long time, you know? We hadn't seen that in a long time. Glob, glob, glob. Coping juice. Delusion juice. Yum. But anyway, thank you for being along for this journey. Again, in my 40s. About to hit 42 years of age in, in a month, actually. Wow, one month from today is, is actually my 42nd birthday. I didn't even realize that. Well, happy fuck you to you, Phil, because, again, age has nothing to do with any of this. But yet, you want to bring up the fact that you're getting older and your hands are hurting for playing video games. When, in reality, there are people way older than you that play video games and have more of an enjoyable time than you do. I'm actually doing better at fighting games now than I ever have before, with the exception being the mid-2000s when I was doing so well at Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I would argue that was the highest level of competition I've ever had when I was winning tournaments and stuff in Super Turbo. Losing money matches, almost getting your ass kicked by Jaha, which most people wished would have actually happened. But outside of that, now is the best I've ever been. And I'm, I'm old. I have bad reaction time, right? And I'm still doing well. That's pretty crazy. Again, Phil, there are people way older than you are that have more of a reaction time than you. The only reason why you're not doing good when it comes to reaction time is, again, you just aren't that great with video games, bro. So anyway, um, I certainly hope that you guys are enjoying this stuff, and I'm going to keep with it, stick with it, and try to get my Yoshimitsu to blue. I don't know if it'll happen. What's gonna, What very well may happen is I'm going to hit a wall where because I only play the game a couple times a week, I just don't have enough knowledge to win anymore. I'm going to be, I'll win a few, then lose a few, then win a few and lose a few and never be able to, to proceed because people are going to have these advanced tactics and strategies that I'm not going to understand. You know, right now I'm having a lot of problems with character knowledge. Every time I fight a Kuma, I lose because the Kuma does something I didn't even know was in their moveset because I've only fought like three Kumas, right? And yet, we go back to Street Fighter VI because as soon as he hits a certain rank in that game, mostly diamond he's gonna say that he's hit a wall that's no longer fun hitting master he can't play them anymore because he's hit a wall it's gonna be the same thing with tekken 8 trying to get to that blue rank it's just a, again the full circle of dark side phil has hidden itself yet again so that's just gonna keep happening is that people are gonna hit me with these moves i don't even know what they are and then the whole round's over like son of a bitch right you could i don't know do research when it comes to these characters to find out what their move sets are but no, you're going to rely on Ivan the Great from giving you the the whole knowledge that you will need of Tekken 8. It's it's just, again, the cycle of fail continues. So, that knowledge gap, yeah, that knowledge gap is killing me right now. And only playing, you know, twice a week is just, it's, it's going to be rough. But I'm going to do my best. You know, I'm playing it again on Friday night 
Friday Night Fights, and we'll see if I can keep it moving, right? Yep, keep it moving with all the spam that you're just going to keep constantly using. Sarah says, the problem is if you become virally popular, you'll have to lose your current niche audience. The fans of your content are not also fans of the mainstream viral creators. Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. I also see whenever he was doing this that apparently a viewbot came back into play. So now he has a shitload of viewers watching his podcast, which is something that he never has happened before. And yet he wants to say that this is all organic growth, dude. I don't know about that. But here's the thing. If I were to grow to the point where now I'm like, you know, bringing in so many viewers and the chat is going buh, 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 and there's so many people there, right? I would not, definitely would not have the personal ability to talk with many of you like I do on a daily basis. I enjoy our conversation. What conversations do you have, Phil? When you talk to Jade, he says what he had for dinner. He's like, oh, was it good, Jade? It was good. Or Derek popping into the chat with some useless knowledge that nobody gives a fuck about. And as soon as he dips out, he spams the chat multiple times say he's leaving and you're like okay Derek bye what's personal about your chat there's nothing personal about it you're not coming as like hey man what's up I've seen a lot of streams where if people start their streams they'll know exactly who they are and they always will say hey what's up man hey what's up you hey what's up oh hey oh hey that guy's there you'll see that because those streams are more personal these streams that you have for yourself there's no personal interaction but yet you want to keep going on to say that you have these when rally you're not even an interactive streamer phil and great now i'm bush about fuck you phil i enjoy the fact that i recognize many of you in chat and we have kind of running jokes and things you know what i mean that running jokes oh you pull that meme in my chat oh you're banned that's a nice feeling it feels like it's a group of a community of friends or people hanging out as opposed to oh this is a crazy ass party room with a zillion people in it bouncing off the walls going nuts going blah, 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 freaking out spamming memes being stupid it doesn't feel like that in my chats wait wait, wait wait so the whole thing about running jokes that's fine but if someone puts memes in your chats that it's stupid now uh, one thing phil you can always put down the slow mode so that way you can actually read your chat to see who's telling these jokes and these memes so you can ban them but also another thing with it though it's like you want to say that having a massive audience is a bad thing, but yet that's what you want. And that's what you're trying to do with trying to bring in these bots out of nowhere to actually boost the out, like your viewership so that it can help you when in reality that's actually not a good look for you at all. Correct? That's a good thing. I like having a better organized stream. I've always enjoyed that. And I hope that you understand that. Like, that's why... I have not actively done things to try to make myself get virally popular. Uh-huh. So you didn't play Pal World because it was virally popular that you just wanted to play it for yourself? You didn't want to play all these hot new releases to try to get the day one views and to try to get some people to come into your stream to check you out for the first time with all these hot new releases? Yeah, you're not trying to be virally popular, huh? I could. And the sad part is it wouldn't be good stuff. I would have to basically become like a lot of these other people who the only way that they can get attention on the internet is to make themselves a joke, to be dramatic, to be stupid, right? And you want to know the reason why they're popular, Phil? For all the reasons that you're trying to give, they're entertaining in the process. They know exactly how to entertain their audience while also being informative when it comes to certain topics, which is something that you're clearly not on both ends. So I don't do that on purpose. I just stay in my lane. I just enjoy what I do as a, as a you know a basic thing. I don't rattle any tr trees. I uh, I just try to be here and and and, uh, and enjoy who I am and what I'm doing with all of you. You know what I'm saying? I don't rattle any trees. I don't bring up LTG for clout. I don't bring up side scrollers to start drama. I don't bring up Keemstar because of drama. I don't say this. I don't do this for drama to try and make myself get attention. I don't say that I was hacked by Comcast. Yeah, you want to say that you don't rattle trees, but you do that quite a lot, Phil. But you want to point at someone else that's nowhere even near the tree, and you're just blaming those people for it. So, I hope you understand that. There's a reason for that. There were many times over the years that I did have abilities to grow or try to jump on those bandwagons, and I don't want to do that. You had that opportunity, but you pissed it away and just squandered every opportunity. Not because of detractors, not because of the companies that were trying to sponsor you or try to actually help you, Machinima. 
it's always going to be based around you because it's always your fault at the end of it. But you're going to say that it's everyone else's fault but you. And when shit doesn't go your way or shit like drops you, then all of a sudden it's someone else's fault and you want to play the victim card yet again. And the other thing is, again, I feel like a lot of these games that go viral, right? They're not my style of game. It's for a different style of streamer. It's for a different style of content creator that I'm not. You know, I'm just well, Phil, you can always try the games out to see if you would actually enjoy them. Problem is, though, is that you just look at it from what you see of it and you go, well, that's not my kind of game. I'm not interested in it. We're not interested in it. When people are interested in this certain game that they want you to play, you keep coming up with excuses to why you don't want to play them. But again, you want to say that this is all jumping on a bandwagon and just pretending to be something that you're not. But then again, you do the pretending that it's something you're not on an everyday basis. By saying that you're a variety content curator that's interactive with their audience. It's not that. And that's okay. I think the problem right now with YouTube and Twitch and all that, everyone thinks that the, there's one way to do it. You should just do that and then you're popular. And if you don't do it, you're doing it wrong. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, most people that actually just play these games or they just make videos or content for the certain sites, they're just doing it because it's a hobby. They're just doing something to pass the time. And hoping that someone is actually watching in on it to see, huh, they're actually enjoying themselves when it comes to this. Or they're just trying to check out see if the game's going to be meant for them or not. But you keep mentioning this whole thing about how everybody that does it is trying to get popular. When in reality, that's not the case for everybody. You're just generalizing what everyone seems to do creating content. In life, it is variety. That is the spice of life, as they say. If yeah, variety is spice of life, but the variety in your case would be three to four games that you constantly keep playing and hoping you get money out of it, mixed in with delusions, copium, gin, and just saying that you have a happy life, when in reality, you don't, and then the excuses. That's all of that is your variety being the spice of your life. Everyone just did everything exactly the same in life. Life would be boring. You want people to be doing things in different ways for different kinds of audiences. I feel like the content I make is great for my audience. I don't have to play every viral game because it's not the style of content that I put out. People don't look to that. Look to me for that. You know what I'm saying? They don't look at you for it because you don't want to play any of these games at all. And you want to constantly come up with excuses to why you don't want to play them. But yet you're saying that everybody that does this is doing the exact same thing. And that it's boring. When in reality, that's just a big massive amount of projection coming from you. Because you're the boring one here. I definitely feel like people don't get that like well if you're not doing it exactly the way that everyone else does it and you're not getting virally popular as a result of that you're doing it wrong right 10 years of failure despite the fact that i'm still here still profitable have a great personal life have a great professional life 10 years of failure uh-huh i love how you had to bring up turkey tom yet again and that's still dancing around your cellar bellum but yeah all these things that you're saying that you have you don't have that because you keep saying that you have a lot of personal shit going on in your life that's not good, but you don't want to talk about it because, oh, people will take advantage of that and you'll ban anybody that asks. Also saying that you have a successful business, huh, again, I didn't know that begging for money was considered successful. Why am I a failure? Because I didn't copy everything else everyone else was doing so I could become virally popular like them. That's not failure, that was a choice. And it was a very bad choice, Phil. And look at where you are now. Again, holding up your beggar's cup, hoping that people can give you some change. <laughs> Again, this was a bad choice coming from you. That was a choice to be a different kind of person and creator that I'm okay with. If you're not okay with it, maybe you should look in the mirror and wonder why you want everyone to be exactly the fucking same. Because obviously you don't have that level of, like, thought. You just think everything samey, everything good, right? Not every actor who stood out there was intending to be a Leonardo DiCaprio or a Brad Pitt. Not every musician is aspiring to be a Taylor Swift, right? Phil, this whole entire argument that you're trying to bring out that everything is the same is really fucking stupid. Just due to the fact that you're looking at people that are, they want to be actors, that they're trying to be like a certain person. Or every musician is trying to be like a certain musician out there. Do you not understand that people can take influence from what they enjoy watching or who they enjoy listening to? It's all based around 
influence, inspiration. There's always going to be a thing with that, Phil. Not every musician is going to pick up a guitar and think they're going to be next Taylor Swift. No, not at all. Instead, they have their own different style of music they want to put out. I don't see a metalhead coming out of nowhere and making like a death metal vocal of Taylor Swift's You Belong With Me. I don't see any voice actor out there trying to be like Chris Sabat or Yuri Lowenthal. No, instead they're going to have their own unique style to it, giving their own sense of individuality. But again, you're just generalizing the whole fact that everyone's trying to be the same and you're going to point at everybody that believes that they think that if it's not the same as everything else, then it's not going to be good. It's going to be boring. The whole entire thing with this is that you're trying to cope with the fact that everyone is doing better than you are. It's because they know how to play the system and they know how to get attention and they know how to be financially stable, which is something that you're clearly not. I don't make decisions that would make me like that. I haven't done a single thing that would blow me up because I don't care. Yet, you were always trying to bring up drama that's pretty much of a nothing burger, and you try to bring up random people to make yourself relevant, to try to make yourself have all eyes on you, because you're the public persona out there that everyone likes to make fun of you. The actions that you have done over the years really solidifies who you are as a person, as a creator, and people are seeing that more and more and more, but the only person that's not seeing it is you. I don't want to be like that. Right? <clears throat> right? I just love the whole entire thing where it's like, I might be like that, right? Yeah, the cope is already set in. Like heroin to a junkie, it's already kicked in. <laughs> cope juice time. Glob, glob, glob. Yum, yum. Uh, tastes like salt. Thank you. Glenn Alm says you can't be a failure if you sustain this amount of longevity doing it your way. Thank you. What is that to be thanked for, Phil? You want to say the whole thing about longevity. Phil, you've constantly did a lot of shit that made you who you are. And you want to say that you're not a failure because you have longevity. That what? You've been around for about 16 years that you're not a failure? We could pull up any piece of evidence where you're begging for money. Coming up with excuses to why you need money. Gaslighting your audience into believing that they should give you money because you quote unquote suffered. Creating drama to try and make yourself relevant by bringing up a lot of people while doing shit that puts you in that spotlight to begin with. Again, the side scrollers interview, you could have chose to not do it, but you did it anyway because you were hoping that people would come in to be your new whale, to your new customer to give you money every single time. You do that a lot, hoping that you get more of a viewership this way. When in reality, it did not work out for you at all. Instead, it backfired. Any decision that you've made, what you believe to be good at the time, will always backfire. And every single time that happens, you're going to point at someone and blame them for the reason why you're failing. But yet, you're going to say that this is all taken out of context. But it takes maturity and intelligent thought to understand that. Which is something that you clearly don't have. Not a lot of people have that capability in the modern day. Like you. People are just becoming stupider. And more stupid people watch the content from the stupider people, and it just propagates more stupidity. And there's nothing you can do about that. And yet, Phil does not understand that the reason why there's more content creators out there is because people are inspired by other content creators to make their own. It's the same way, no matter how you look at it. You can look at people in the music community, the Let's Play community, even the Detractor community has its own set of people out there that were inspired by someone else to make content and give it their own spin of things. Things. But no, according to Phil, if you are watching content like that, it's just going to make stupid people create stupider content out there, and it's going to go on and on and on, creating a sea of stupidity. When in reality, the only one that created the sea of stupidity was Phil himself with that take, and I'm sorry, Phil, you think that you got everybody with that gotcha moment? It's, you didn't get us with that, Phil. You tried your best, and you failed miserably. The lesson is... Never try. <laughs> and yet, the cycle of Phil will continuously keep going. When he wants to say that he got a certain rank in a video game, hoping that it will get a lot of attention and a positive light because he wants to call it an accomplishment, 
It's just truly pathetic coming from a loser like Phil. He wants to keep going on to say that he could master any game that he wanted to while completely miswording and not even saying the phrase right. He just wants to cope and seethe and mold just due to the fact that no one takes his quote unquote accomplishments seriously. Phil, it's a video game. No one's gonna sit there and pat you on the back and give you a good game butt slap by saying that you got purple in Tekken 8. No one's gonna do that, Phil. But yet you believe that people giving you money and that people are going, oh, it time good every single time that you do well in a video game. It's just not plausible to actually sustain that in real life. But continuing onward for that point, he wants to go on to say that he could be popular if he wanted to, that he could just play a video game or react to any content and he could be virally popular. But he wants to go on the same notion that everybody that does this is samey, not even knowing what an inspiration is to somebody or how someone's acting or someone's music or someone's content could be an influence on their life into their own style of content. Like Phil, there's a thing called a homage. Every single time that they do something or create something, it's usually to pay a homage to something they really enjoy. If they have a certain acting style, based around another actor, it's not taking from them and it's not trying to be the same as that person, it's trying to be something of their own accord while playing an inspiration to them. Same thing with music. You can imagine that people can listen to John for a Cowboy's Moon Healer and they can make something out of it but in their own style. But you don't understand that, Phil, because, well, 10 years of failure really kicked in and that's never going to be let go from you. But with that said and done, I'm going to move on to the Phil Prayer. Deliver us from the dents. Deliver us from the pay pigs. Deliver us from the pig gnosis. May we never become dented. May we never become a beggar like Dark Side Phil. And just for the love of God, if you have an accomplishment that means something, like having a home for your first time, getting married, graduating college with the highest like records and accords and all that, that's always considered a great accomplishment. Don't go around saying that you got purple rank in Tekken 8 like Phil did, hoping that you'll get something out of it, because in all actuality, video game stats don't really amount up to shit. Depends on who you ask with this, really. But thank y'all so much for watching this video. Have a good rest of y'all's day, rest of y'all's night. Keep it real, beautiful people. I'll see y'all in the next video.